What's up, y'all? It's your boy Shazni. All right, so I don't know how long this video is gonna be because I just experienced something real special. Uh, so you know, grab a drink, a bag of popcorn, and and let me play here. All right, because I got a lot to say. So I just watched Triple R, R R R, directed by S S Rajamouli, and I would say this, you know. I was a fan of his work, but I wasn't, you know, like a die-hard S.S. Rajamouli fan. And from this point on, your boy is a believer. He is the truth. For me, Triple R is probably one of the, if not the most well-marketed Indian films I've ever seen. I mean, the actors and the director, the lengths in which they went to I, I thought it was a brilliant inclusive way because it made even general public who wasn't necessarily watching a uh, telugu films here just were curious and the movie being good with great responses is kind of makes me want to go out there and experience this film it feels like we all as fans of indian cinema must support this film must go watch this film and i think that's a, such a collectively an amazing feeling to have you know and i thought that was really wonderful prior to you know experiencing the film itself but then the film itself was a wonderful masala cinematic experience ss rajamula did something so special for me Ex like i could I, i'm only going to speak for myself and my experience and there's things that i you know i could i didn't necessarily vibe with which i'll get to as well but overall I love the film, so that's a clear point right off the bat. The way S.S. Rajamouli was able to utilize mythology in a masala cinematic execution, but at the same time taking it very seriously and giving us an authentic experience. All that coming in together makes this so special of a film because it is a rooted real Indian film that you can really be proud of like the style in which they executed some of these scenes there's some sequences where they feel real some sequences they do feel over the top and there's a beautiful balance that seems very precise and beautifully orchestrated and another thing that this film in, in ways it was executed reminded me of is one of my all-time favorite filmmakers Zack Snyder. Zack Snyder has this way of executing films utilizing mythology for example he made a zombie film his last film Army of the Dead. It's a zombie film on the surface level it's, it's a zombie film yet he named the main zombie the big boss as this character called Zeus which is a Greek god so he utilized a lot of this Greek mythology in ways he wrote a screenplay and executed that film and there's a lot more to it because we'll be getting some sequels which will explore deeper into that and there's many other characters kind of play into that ideology and SS Rajamouli does the same thing with some Indian mythos and I thought that was so effing dope and the imagery that supports it, my God, it was beautiful. And there's so many levels to the story as well because the story is really great. It takes the, the movie takes place in during the time of 1920s, and this this story takes place before. And when the movie ends, it feels like it is just the beginning, which is the coolest feeling. Because when when the movie ends, I'm like, hey man, the movie's theoretically kind of getting started because of course there's a lot more to do even after the film ended. I thought that was a very interesting uh, emotional feeling. And let's talk about Ram Charan and Juni NTR. My God, the amount of effort. I mean, this this movie definitely took a, a lot out of them because physically the amount of things they got to do. Like I mean, every single, every five minutes, they got to be doing some crazy stunts, always running, so much energy, yet delivered a wonderful performance with a lot of multitudes of layers that I was able to appreciate. The opening sequence for Ram Charan's character, Ram. Yo, I'm, I, I, I couldn't believe what was being executed to me, what was being delivered to me. 
when he jumps off, I'm like, okay, that's a cool, you know, typical masala move right there, you know, when he jumps over the fence. But then the way he was fighting essentially like, you know, hundreds, maybe thousands of people out there and made it feel real was, I don't, I don't even know how they did that in that way. It was That's great performance by Ram Charan. Beautifully directed, beautifully, um, you know, orchestrated, beautifully edited, everything about that sequence. That's when I knew that sequence for me was like, yo, I'm in it for something real special. And that opening is one of the best opening scenes I've ever seen in an Indian film, especially in, in a mass masala Indian film. I thought that was, that was brilliant and I really, really loved. And also the, the boxing, you know what I'm saying, man. This Ram, see, I, I both of the characters were fantastic, but I really, really loved uh, Ram Charan's character, Ram, because I just felt like he, I thought he was one of the most fascinating characters I've ever seen because I really loved his origin story, his backstory, essentially, and what, like, everything about him, the the layers, the 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 complexity, the conflict within himself. Ram Charan had to do a lot. He had to convey a lot without saying any words. His eyes were screaming. He was in tears, but at the same time, he has to be like he has to kind of showcase this kind of a hardened soul. And he has a, a, a other mission that is going underneath. You know, there's so much going in between those eyes for that character, and you can feel the struggle. You can feel how hard it is to be him in many of those many of those circumstances and situations that he was put in and, he, and his characters and his character had to be and make some tough choices for a bigger picture i thought that storyline was brilliant and so well executed and then judy and tears and that is another character that feels real in that environment one is fighting for a both a both a personal cause but one feels more of an individual individual cause Versus the other, much more, you know, country size, right? Uh, and and how those because at the end of the day, their strength and power ideologies are essentially the same. It's about freeing, but they are both coming at it from different perspectives because they had different goals. And how those things play out, I thought that was quite brilliant as well. Also, it was quite impressive how SS Rajamouli depended on visual storytelling instead of everything being so verbal which is kind of a structure in which a lot of indian films are executed always spoon feeding us always explaining everything but here there are uh, moments of exposition but most of the film is very visual another great thing about the opening sequence for ram Charan's character is that everything is happening without the main character saying a single word like his action speaks louder than the words and for ss rajamoli to depend on visual storytelling to this level on this scale of a film it is the most impressive aspect of the film for me because as a as a as a fan of cinema i love when filmmakers depend and actually respect the audience's intellect and give us a visual storytelling that is as immersive and i watched this film in telugu with subtitles yet it wasn't like i i didn't feel like i spent a lot of time reading subtitles because a lot of it was on the screen for me to experience and feel all right when it comes to some of my issues are generally things that i personally couldn't vibe with i mean you may feel different and this is something that i kind of experienced many times with indian cinema there's a structural concept here in the in the writing that many films do from indian cinema specifically when the second half takes place there is a flashback and the flashback itself i thought it was quite brilliant and it was very effective and every, this movie made me tear up certain points because i was emo emotionally engaged and emotionally invested uh with the characters the story and the world and the setting of it all but structurally when a flashback happens it kind of takes me out of the film a little bit because that structure is so overdone at this point so many movies have done it to a level where to a level of exhaustion to me personally that took me on but the but the the flashback itself was so in interesting that went away and I was immersed. My second issue is the length. The film is three hours. And again, I, I don't care whether the, whether a film is four hours or three hours long initially. Like whatever the runtime the filmmaker feels like is necessary, that's that. And I go in there and I experience whatever's on the screen. But I can't, I, cannot deny, I can't deny the fact that I felt 
like at a certain point the film was dragging a little bit in the second half um they could have kind of tightened up a little bit could have felt that, that the pacing was a little bit off in the second half because things will come things felt to it, it felt like there's a couple of scenes where it felt like if we get the point here you know it felt like we are re-experiencing some of the things that we already experienced in the first half emotionally so some of those things could have been tightened up or edited out and st- still would have left left us with the same impact so length was an issue but it's it's not it's like listen it wasn't it wasn't it wasn't taking anything away from the overall greatness the same sort of an issue i had with the batman where both have essentially the same runtime but sometimes certain films earns every minute you know what i'm saying and certain films you can feel it even though it, it doesn't take away from the overall greatness when you feel it you cannot help but be honest about it and that's that's where i'm i'm at in my stance on that it, it could have been tightened up better some way shape or form to make the second half spacing less dragging that's how i felt my third issue this is really a preference i don't know if any of you feel this way this this is more of a personal pet peeve i do not like when films end with a song a music video and then the credits are rolling at the end it's maybe an aesthetical aspect to me but even story wise i love when the f- the screen goes dark and the credits are rolling it feels like a great circle like i just the experience just ended and i'm there in awe all my videos are really about how how was my experience and how i felt during the film and i'm expressing that through my video so that's that was more of a nitpick maybe but it's a personal pet peeve that kind of bothers me and for some of you probably doesn't even matter like you're like nah that's for, for us it doesn't matter like we we used to it or whatever but for me every single time never going to get used to it so but those things are very minute doesn't really take away from the overall greatness of the the main film so let me get to a couple couple of scenes that I really really loved so we spoke about the opening sequence for uh, Ram Charan's character June Inter character had a pretty cool opening scene as well but the fight in the middle of the film i, I don't want to give too much detail for for those who hasn't seen the film but for those who have i want you to know how I, how i felt about that moment the fight scene that takes place during you know the the intermission the interval sequence right that moment the end of the first half the fight scene the choreography for the fight it was next level pure straight fire i I was just edge of my I'm like, yo, they're actually doing this and they're killing it. This looks so good. I felt every punch was, because it's not just the cool fight scenes and moves because it's a great aesthetic to it because it was beautiful. The composition of the fights were really, really well done. They, they, they edited it well, man. This, I always talk about this because it makes me happy as a, as a fan of Indian cinema and I want Indian cinema to thrive. The editing was so good in this movie for action sequences because that's always one of those things in like if you watch recently Valley May that movie's massive great stunts stunt works were were ruined by the editing for me. And here the way the camera moves and the way it's edits and you can feel the punch everything felt natural it felt it was it was a great masala execution you know and 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 that is really hard to come by nowadays. It, it was it, it, because when they fight hand to hand it's good it's, it looks really good it feels really good and i was really really happy with it i was super satisfied with it but the story underneath it all that's what makes it even better because you you at the edge of the seat because you don't know how this moment will conclude and that's another great thing about the film because it, it there is a a genre structure to it yet you're still excited to see what's going to come next how will all of this will conclude and that is a very exciting prospect so what especially the way that whole sequence ends that was brilliant too because there's a, like Ram Charan's character especially when you get to know more and looking back at what that moment meant and how how, how tough that moment would have been for the characters especially Ram Charan's character in that moment his performance is like I think is one of I think is my favorite I've ever seen him I love Ranga Stalam I thought it was great and but in here I love when actors can deliver a great internal performances and Ram Charan here delivered 
one of the best I've ever seen, and I really, 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 really loved it, man. I really loved his performance and his character and where he was coming from. And again, Junior Inter was fantastic, but I've seen him do some great stuff uh, before. You know, he he's he's very good with the way he executes his strength, and he had a he had great imagery as well. But like I said, SS Roger Moore did a wonderful job. Ha having those two characters have real emotional strong points that you can really buy into in both ways and you get it and your your as an audience are in conflict as well so that sequence was wonderful and then now in the second half i think the third act where lo lots happening the third act and this is where a lot of the mythological imagery starts to come in. I mean, we, we do get a lot of it during songs and some visuals, especially the first time these two characters meet. In that moment, you already know what kind of film you're in it for. It's very much embracing the masala aspect of it as well, but also appreciating the, the visual imagery of, of the mythology they're trying to execute here, right? So in the third act of the of the film, that's when S.S. Rajamuli goes all in with imagery every single frame shot composition lighting it's all on fire and water literally and i remember when they uh, when they were releasing the teasers and it was like very you know it was like fire versus water and i was wondering how will this be really is this going to be that relevant in the film itself and oh my god yes it is it is you know psychologically relevant Performance is wide, relevant, story-wise relevant, visually super relevant, and they pay it all off. And from the teaser to the marketing to everything, how they brought this film to us audiences, worth every single penny. And I must shout out for S.S. Roger Moly for bringing the physical aesthetic to these characters and story, because that's something I personally always appreciate, especially when you're going to tackle mythology in such ways. Having actors look the part and feel the part, I think it makes a significant effect consciously and subconsciously as well. So big props for filmmakers really putting that out there for the actors to achieve to that level of greatness. The music was really good. The music was powerful. I thought that was really, really fantastic. The score was brilliant. Overall, I thought RRR was a a great masala mythological film. You know, sometimes if you see the masala movies where it's it's essentially a comedy. I like when masala movies are taken seriously. I think there's a special unique element to that that is rare and that doesn't exist in any other film industry other than Indian cinema. And SS Rajamuli truly understands that. Also look, the CGI at points were strong, at points it was weak, but the story always carries through. The story is always strong and the emotional engagement was always immersive enough where you were able to get get past that. Usually sometimes you, you can complain hard about the CGI when there isn't much story underneath to support it. So you just kind of really get annoyed with the CGI. But some of the CGI shots were brilliant. Some you can you can really feel that it's still super raw and might have needed more budget to polish it and stuff like that. But that's something that is going to constantly get better with this movie doing so well and the budget's increasing i think indian cinema's greatness is only limited by budget because listen s raja Muli probably could have gone even further with this film given a little bit more budget i, I would assume so trust me because this man has some very creative visuals and creative action set pieces and he's a rare breed because many people think they can do what ss raja Muli does but this this man is special he is one of one and can't wait to see what he does next man because i'll be there opening night so with that said guys if you've seen rrr let me know what y'all thought of it on the comments down below if you haven't what y'all waiting for man go experience this film and as for always thank you so much for watching if you guys enjoyed my thoughts on and want to see more of it like comment subscribe hit the notification bell and see you guys on my next one Salute.